Good. I think we can start now. Let's see. other people can join later. So today, um, so for, let me first share the agenda. Uh, I think first, uh, um, um, I, I'm thinking of, let's go to the use case discussion. Uh, I think some people already put the, some use cases in the document. And then we're going to have a presentation of existing offerings and features. This is uh, the action item from uh, last meeting. And then we can go through some review comments on the proposal document. I saw some people putting the review comments. We can go through that. Um, so any other thing you would like to add to today's discussion? Or does this sound good? Okay, if no. This is good for me. Okay, great. Good, thank you. So let, let me first go through the use cases. I think in the, um, so we have several people put in. So these people put in some use case. Um, so first, this use case, um, as I, I put in this use case, so I'm going to go through it. It's a like home monitoring use case. I think, you know, um, the purpose of we go through the use case is to, um, one purpose is to, I just uh, a comment say whether we need an event state. Okay, so for this use case, let me try to go through. Use this diagram probably is easier to go through it. Can you can you see this document, this diagram clearly? I can, and then I also have it pulled up in the like I went to the document also on my own computer, so I can see both. I don't know what everyone else is doing. Yeah, I I can see it. Okay. Okay. Good. If you can see, okay, let me see whether this will make it larger. Uh, view, is that view? Yeah. Oh, it's, I think it's already view 100. Maybe 125. Okay, maybe this is better. Okay, so um, so this diagram shows it's a home monitoring system. Um, of course, you know, this is just, uh, you know, um, not, not, you know, every detail of the home monitoring system, the different types, but this is just home monitoring application. Um, so at the beginning, um, there will be this, uh, you know, enter this state. So to do, there will be three. Okay, so maybe let me go first, go through this, the event. So they are, um, do open this application. Is so, Kathy, before you even do so state one, is state one like a waiting state? Waiting for an event to happen? No. No, it's not uh, a waiting state for event to happen. Basically, you know, the first event, no matter is event is a door open or motion detection event, that will trigger the function, the, the the workflow to start any of these two event. So the first event, first state actually is an event state because it's waiting for an event. But any event comes, then you know it's going to start the workflow and the enter. Uh, so either event one or event two is going to trigger state one. Yeah, it's going to trigger state one. That's right. Okay. So it's drawn this way. So the other, I think that people draw another way. So there is a start, you know, uh, it's not a state, but you know, there's a start, um, start, um, start, um, how to say it, starting point. And then the first event comes, it's an event state. Okay, so I draw this way. I, I guess different people draw differently. This is just representation issue. So what I mean is, you know, in this state, when the event one or event two comes, any of this event comes, it's going to transition to the next state. Okay, so in, in state one, so when any of the event comes, the workflow starts, and then you know, if it's door open event, it's going to transition to the next state. If it's a motion event, it's going to transition to, it's going to, okay, to trigger. So this event will trigger a function called face recognition function to recognize. Okay. So, so, so state one is actually some kind of a decision state then? State one is kind of like, uh, so that means in state one, you can receive multiple events. Yeah. yeah but, multiple but it's, also, events. it's also deciding the next path of where we should go, right? Exactly. Exactly. Because that's the application once, right? And so the application, you know, the this application, home monitoring, you know, you could receive a door open first and then later a motion detection. Or you could receive a motion detection sensor event first and then later a door open event, right? So it depends on the scenario. So that's why in order to handle this scenario, this state needs to be able to to you know to accept you know multiple events and then different events could branch out to different next state as you just mentioned yeah so 
if it's so let's go through if it's door open event um it's going to transition to state two if it's a motion event it's going to first trigger a function called face recognition to recognize whether it's family member or not family member right if it's a family member so that, of course that's the result of the function one uh this serverless function if it's a family member everything fine you know there's no this is a false alarm if it's not a family member then it transition to the next state which i give it in state four okay so that, uh, and then you know in state four you know it's going to here it's going to wait for another event to see whether there's a door open event or window open event uh, i simplify a little bit in here i didn't mention the window open event because it's similar to door open event so it's going to wait for another event so if this event happens okay if there's a, you know it's not a family member and then the door was the front door was open then you know it is it's most probably it could be a burglary um and broke into the and um, breaks into the house right and then so there will be um uh, uh, it's going to trigger another function so this event is going to trigger a function second function which will send a message to the two contacts on the file okay so whatever every home you can you know you can uh, put in two contacts okay so now let's stop here i'm going to go to the left side no, so i have a question uh, yeah. yeah yeah so if you are in state four and you wait for an event to happen how long are you expecting this to wait there okay that's a very good question so there should be uh, okay so there should be a timeout value there that's how I think you already come into how we are going to design it to support this, right? So um, that's very good. You know, there should be a timeout because if it's long time between the gap, right? It doesn't necessarily mean it's a burglary, right? Mm -hmm. so, so for this application, yeah, there should be a timeout here. Okay. Um, so let, let me stop this side. I go to the left side. If it's a door open event, there's no function to trigger to processing it. It just go to state two. In state two, it's going to wait for another event, which is a motion um, detection event. Again, there should be a timeout, timeout value associated with this, you know, this state. Um, and then, you know, when they get a motion and detection um, uh, event, it's going to same thing. So the door is going to do a face recognition. If it's family member, that's fine. You know, the family member opens the front door, that's okay. If it's not family member, then when it, it's going to go to state three, so at state three, also two events already happen. One is door open, the other is motion. And then same thing, it could be a burglar um, breaking into the house. So it's going to send them as trigger a, a second service function, send the message to the contacts on the file. So these two, so now we come to either state three or state four. Of course, only in the reality, only one pass will happen, right? But no matter which pass happen, so when we come to here, so now we'll wait for the response. Can we send, so this function two already send a text message and email to the context. And then we come to state five. State five has to wait for another external event, which is a response from the, from the two contacts. So if suppose say there's a response, then you know it's going to do automatic uh, language processing, say what kind of response it is. Is it okay response or not okay? Uh, because when, when this message sent, it's going to send together with the image too. It's, you know, it's not a family member, but I send the image. And then if the response say, oh, it's okay, so everything fine, it's a false alarm. If it says not okay, then it's going to trigger a notification message to the police department, to, you know, all those emergency department. Okay. And then now come back to state five. So in here, if they time out, suppose, and here you start a timer, right? If it time out, it's going to automatically call that means there's no response from the from the two contacts. There's no text response or email response. Then it's going to call automatically dial the number to call the um, the contact. And then if the contact response say okay, so uh, not okay, so then you know it goes through the same process. I simplify it a little bit on the whole because our purpose is not to really you know design a home monitoring system. I just use this how home monitoring. Uh, application as a use case. So when they need to migrate to serverless um, platform, right? So what they could, you know, what we need to support the whole workflow. So we, I think we already see that we need the event state because there are several states that, you know, wait for external event. Also, we need to support like timeout in that state. 
if we wait for our event, right? Um, there is also, actually it also shows we need to correlate this event because the door open and the motion detection, we need to know they come from the same house. Otherwise you cannot say, you cannot say okay, door open from, you know, for example, Rachel's house to a motion detection event coming from uh, Kathy's house. That's not right. So, so here, I think we already derived some requirements, say we need to support um, event state, we need to support, you know, the, the what's that, the time in um, the ti a timer in, the, in that state. Also, we need to support the correlation between, you know, all these events. And I think, you know, in real service, um, when, we, when the service platform really start to support service application, it's not just a single event trigger, a single function. It's not that simple. As actually quite some application involves multiple events and also multiple functions too. Yeah, so here we have several functions, you know, we have one, two, three, four, five functions. And then we have multiple steps. We can model this as, you know, different state. Yeah, so this is this use case. Um, any questions? So if not, let's go to the next uh, um, next uh, work uh, use case. Uh, I think who put this in? Fahar, right? You put this in, right? Fahar, are you online? Yeah, yeah, I'm online. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, can you guys hear okay. me? Yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, hear so you. I went ahead and put a couple of uh, use cases there. In general, they are far more simpler than what Kathy just went through. So. And you know they're they're not the complete details. It's just the basic uh, cases that you would that that can be used to implement uh, the base. For example, case one, it's a basic loan approval process. Uh, of course, you can add far more complexity to it. Uh, I think here this is a, a video, right? Uh, oh, I think you you probably mess up the loan approval with a video. Go down. I think it's gone upside down or what? Oh, I think you you have this video, right? This is a video. I think you attached the wrong diagram because here it shows it's a video, video metadata. All right, sorry. So let's go down to the second one. I'll, I'll, I'll correct that. Okay. So let's say this is for a basic employee travel booking. We all book tickets, airline tickets from, from our employers. So this is what it, it would look like. The first thing is the employer goes, uh, the employee goes, uh, sorry, a little bit higher up, there you go. The employee goes. Sorry, sorry. yeah, I know, I'm trying to okay, yeah. mm -hmm. Go ahead, Fahar, sorry. So event one is the employee goes, he, he submits a form, books a ticket, the form will be entered either in a storage or in a database. Once they, that, that's, that's what's shown in the diagram as event one. Once event one happens, state one will go execute the basic uh, function one, which is, you know, call it a travel validation function. This will essentially check the employer, employee's current status, employed, not employed, current grade, in case the, in case the employer has limits on grade, like some employers do, some don't. Uh, after he does the basic travel validation, he'll go to state two. Uh, up in state two, basically, uh, it's a, and in, after the validation, if, if the validation succeeds, uh, an email will be sent to the, ma to, to the employee's manager. It's all part of the uh, function one, the, the travel validation function. After it does send the email or whatever, notification, et cetera, the, the workflow transitions to state two, it stays there until and, un, until and unless the manager basically approves or rejects it. And as someone just said, yes, there'll be a timeout. There'll, there'll always be a default timeout. If, if the manager doesn't respond, in this case, I would assume you can probably set a longer timeout, 24 hours, 48 hours. If not, the workflow is ended, the thing is canceled. If the manager is, or you can make it more complex. You can escalate the issue to a higher level manager, et cetera, et cetera. Let's take the simple case, the manager approves or disapproves. As soon as the event comes, state two will transition to the next state. I've called it an approved state. I could as well have called it just a state three, state four. In, in the approved state, it's essentially a, you, are, you, are, you are checking for the results of the event, event two. If it's a yes, then you transition to state three. If it's a no, that's it. Uh, the approval, the, the employee travel request was not granted, it, it, it ends. Once you move to state three, 
The next thing is you, you essentially just like AWS start multiple parallel functions. You basically check the price for airline A, airline B, etc. After you get all the all the responses back, you transition to state four. In state four, you essentially compare the function, not necessarily for price. You compare for time, you compare for you know all other factors, whatever your business logic is. After you do that, you finally figure out which which airline you're gonna book at. You move to state five, and in F five, you finally go ahead, you do the actual booking, and that's where the workflow ends. You know, it's just an exemplary workflow that I'm trying to illustrate for the case of serverless workflows. Any questions? Yeah, I think I'm still not able to wrap my head around. I, same question with sure. Kathy. Uh, sure, sure. I think the, the, when we start having states that waiting for another function to come in, that's the equivalent of me running a service waiting for a request to come in. It completely beats the concept of serverless, right? Why can't we have uh, this with you basically? You mean, to, you so mean waiting for a, sorry, you mean waiting for an event to come in? I thought I, I heard you say waiting for a function to come in. Yeah, waiting for like the manager approval over here. Sorry, event. 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 Yes, uh, sure. Go ahead. So, so we can have a function which is basically approve. Uh, sorry, to create a, a ticket. So book a ticket. Somebody does that, and that creates clicks of validation. That's great. And then they sends another calls another function to send an email to a manager, and that's where the workflow ends. Now, when the manager when the manager approves, another workflow kicks in. Like this workflow waiting for the manager approval to come in that in my mind is becoming traditional application is no longer serverless. It is actually uh, serverless because nothing is running. There's no thread or anything running. The whole idea be, is... No, but the, you are in a wait state, right? How is your workflow still in a wait state? Waiting that for the manager on, approval to come in. Well, that's the beauty of the implementation. There are multiple ways to do it. If you do it using Golang, using thread, yeah, your thread will be waiting. That's one way to do it. That's that 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 explains your explanation. The other way is you basically save the state to a database and basically at that point just wait. And when the thread kicks in, from but, from whatever but, correlation you get, you get it from the database. That but those are the implementation. But, but, but there is in that so case. I think this had a there doesn't have to be a line between state one and state two. Okay. They could be two separate workflows, right? Why even we thinking of it as a single workflow then? So the whole point of this is, so what you are suggesting is what AWS does. It's basically you break a workflow into multiple, uh, into multiple uh, step functions. And you are basically interconnecting the step functions using essentially Lambda functions. So that's one way to look at it. I think a more with that, if you have to troubleshoot it, hey, it's like you have a workflow consisting of, let's say, AWS has some examples. You have something like seven, eight different step, uh, step functions, all mm -hmm. of them interconnected using Lambda functions. If you have to start troubleshooting, hey, workflow one is currently in, in step function three and it is stuck in function four. Would that be easier? And remember that itself, that workflow itself will scale. So you could have 10 instances of a workflow. Instance one is run currently running step function three. It's stuck in the middle of function three. Yeah. Whereas here right now, every workflow, that's it. It's its own self-contained instance. If you need to troubleshoot this, hey, the first instance of this workflow is currently stuck in state two. We need to troubleshoot that. Which one do you think would be easier? Uh, I think this will be more difficult. Uh, the reason is because we're going to have so many workflows stuck in different states and then we're going to get a manager response. We have to make sure this manager response is going to go unlock this workflow. Like there's going to be a lot of correlation, a lot of state keeping that will need to happen in this case, right? Like, and we need to back, then we need to back yeah, up this state. We need to do like, this is going to be so much more complex than just having... Uh, I disagree entirely with that. Yeah, uh, if you have a single agree, workflow, yeah. from the user's perspective, if you have a single workflow with all that encapsulated within that single workflow, it, uh, as shown here, it becomes much simpler. In terms of usability, you, you're dealing with a single workflow uh, and managing it. You so know, the, when, certainly when you, the, the implementation at the back has to deal with that, but that's not the user's perspective. We're but, intending to... User, bring interoperability here between users and allow them to have a, create a, a, a workflow that would, can be easily visualized and managed. You know, if you've got um, sorry, sorry, multiple I catenated uh, step function makes it much more difficult. I think sorry. I agree with that. That's, that's the way we even sorry, can I, can I, Okay, you guys can keep talking if you can give me a clarification. What do you mean by user? Is it like an end, end user or are you thinking of a developer as a user? Yeah, it would be the developer. I mean, developer. Okay. 
So for a developer, I think this is going to be a lot more complex because now you have these different states, which are weight states. So I have this is going to leak into so many of my workflows that are open and that I need to have something that's going to go clean out these uh, states, which are timed out. It's going to be a lot more difficult to debug in my mind uh, because we're just leaving fun uh, workflows in wait states all over the place, waiting for functions. And somebody, when, it, when, it, when an event comes, we need to know, hey, is this even going to trigger a new function or this is going to go continue an existing workflow? Like, is a lot more complexity, I think. So, Varun, I think, Varun, I think you are mixing the user's perspective with a with a back end implementation. I think all those complications you mentioned is a back end implementation. It's not the user perspective. From the user perspective, you only need to draw this workflow, just one workflow. But your back end need to take care of, you know, when to, you know, when to, you know, uh, like, you know, to move to the next state, like how to correlate, you know, this event. That's your back end. It's not the user. Your user doesn't care how you do it, right? Yeah, how you're going to implement the workflow. Understood. Yeah. Point so let's don't. I, if, we mix, if we mix the user's perspective of the, you know, the user's interface with the back end implementation, you know, then you know you are going to. I think that's not right. The back end, you know, you can do whatever way you like, right? There could be, you know, simple implementation, um, or there could be complicated implementation. But that's not, you know, I think what we we will really, you know, address a lot here. But from user's perspective, he just need to you know, to, to specify this one workflow instead of specify, you know, multiple workflows. That's all user need to do. User doesn't care how you are going to, you know, transition to how you are going to implement this, right? Like you said, you know, how you correlate all these events together, how you scale out. Also now come back to the implementation point of view. So let's just say, okay, from user point of view, it's one workflow or multiple workflows then the user need to configure multiple workflows and they need to configure how these workflows, you know, associate together because they all belong to the same travel request, right? The user need to make sure how they configure this to make sure these, you know, all these different work workflows actually are, you know, are used for the same travel request. So yeah. I think it's more complicated rather than just one workflow from you, user's you're, perspective. You're absolutely right. I think I'm thinking definitely more from how I'm going to make sure once we define this language, how we're going to make sure that people will be able to actually adhere to it and implement it. So you guys are right. I think from uh, a developer who's using a service that is following this language, it's definitely easy, but I'm really worried that people will not be able to implement this well, and that might lead to a bad experience. So um, yeah, you guys are right. I'm thinking from a different perspective. Okay, great. So now we can talk about how the back end should implement it. Of course, I think different companies is going to implement it different way, right? But you know, actually it's not really complicated as you thought. If you really think through it, actually there are ways to make it simple. Um, so I think, you know, one thing, you know, you, you mentioned say uh, the, um, but I think probably we can postpone that discussion to sure. later stage. Sure. Yeah, um, we when can we go through this, you know, if you think about the implementation, actually, if we look at the current workflow run times like uh, BPM and engines and so on, then they also implement similar things. So I think we can, someone who is going to implement can uh, get influence from those things as well. Sorry, which one did you mention? So you, you are concerned about the implementation complexity, right? Yeah, so yeah nobody said somebody does it. I don't know. I didn't get the name. Sorry? I thought you mentioned, mentioned that somebody does this today. I didn't get the name of the product. If you, if you look at the current uh, traditional workflow engines, like for example, activity, yeah. Yeah. So those things also do the same thing. So yeah, but that's not serverless, right? That's not what we're going to build. So yeah, it's not serverless. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if if you look at common, that's how now they are pitching that as a serverless as well. So actually, they are also building a similar thing uh, to serverless workflows. So I think we'll go through the current. Who, is, uh, who is speaking? Sorry. Sure, we can we can I'm go sorry. through that. Yeah, I think I. Yeah, I think he. he I think sorry. Who who? Your name, please. <laughs> who Chatura. was speaking? Chatura. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, I think your point is, you know, there are existing ways to support this, right? To implement this, right? That's your point, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I think, you know, um, we need to write some 18 minutes for this discussion because I think the, uh, the questions asked, uh, other people could have the same questions, right? And then um, we clarify to, and then we talk about this. So let me uh, write some meeting minutes. Okay, so here, I'll monitor in case, stay well, we see multiple events, I don't know which they go to. Okay, I think, um, so we're wrong, right? Is that you who asked the question? Yes, that was me, yeah. It's a PE, sorry, I hope I spell your name correctly. Um, we are you and close enough. <laughs> okay, complicated. Seems complicated. Uh, um, um, to oh, you think it's complicated then? But actually, I think uh, okay. Let me see. I think you answer. So there's just a point I'd like to add for this complicated thing. I mean, so as someone who's worked on AWS extensively, even though AWS right now, the step functions doesn't provide event support. If you go inside the message boards and if you look inside the customer requests, customers are requesting that we want events to be supported with step functions. And, and AWS's response is, we, uh, we don't comment on current things. So just to, just to as, keep that in perspective that customers do want the support. That's that's one thing we, what I was looking at and when we yeah. found out the limitations. I'm not surprised at all, but there's a reason that AWS did not introduce it in the first uh, version and that is what my point is. Uh, like serverless will not solve everything in the world and we should not try and boil the ocean. That's my biggest concern, right? We're going to come up with this thing that's going to be difficult for uh, companies to implement and you'll have a spec and people are not going to use that spec. Like I don't want to end it at that point. Like that's my only thing. I just wanted to, yeah. Um. So I'm going to add that later more. And then I think uh, who speak, uh, what your name please? How do you spell your, would you like to put your comment? You say they are existing, right? I would bet. Yeah, maybe would you mind to put your uh, name there? Yeah, I would. Okay, good. Um, C H A T H U R A. C H A. Oh, C -H -A. I know. Okay. Right. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yes. Yes. Good. Um, so now let's go back to um, maybe someone would help if can help write this meeting minutes a little bit. That would be good. Um, so so this is one workflow. So we clarified this, right? And then I think you agree. Yeah, but we'd like to know, know how we can support it, how backend can support it. Okay, good. Let's go so, to uh, the. I, um, have a, I have a bit more fundamental question. So. That is a, what is the purpose of this? That means- Be wrong, uh, right? Is it be wrong? Sorry? No, this is, this is not- Be wrong, are you So my, my question is that, uh, so what is the uh, main purpose that you're trying to address with this? Uh, are we going to create something that can orchestrate my uh, serverless uh, functions or 
this runtime itself has to run as a serverless. So you're saying what are we trying to address here? Yes, uh, that means uh, do we want to that. create something that can orchestrate serverless functions or uh, the runtime that implements this workflow also should run as a serverless? No, I don't think it needs to. And I get, I know what I know where you're getting to. I don't think this this workflow implementer needs to be serverless. Okay. 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 So then, then what are the main differences of this approach that that we are trying to build and current problems? So, so let me try to address this. Um, I would assume the happens. functions are serverless functions. I would assume that all the functions are serverless functions. Yeah, yeah, they are. So in the so diagram I that I have, F1, F2, F3, these are all serverless functions. It's just it's yes, no sir. different than it's no different than Amazon Step functions. Your workflow runs, and then the workflow calls functions. The functions are serverless functions. Yes, but the workflow runtime itself is not serverless, right? That depends on the implementation. In general, it, it probably won't be because it needs to maintain state. So in general, yes. not, but it depends on your implementation. If you use a data maze, yeah, I guess it could be serverless, sure. Okay, so then yeah. I, it's like if, so if you ask someone at Amazon, it's like if you ask someone at AWS, how does your step functions run? Is your step functions itself serverless or do you guys, It's I would assume that's an implementation dependent question. Mm -hmm. So then if you take a normal workflow engine, so it can also invoke uh, serverless functions, right? Absolutely, correct, yes. Yeah, so in that case, what is the main difference between this approach and uh, normal workflow engine? It's like, what's the difference between AWS step functions and what they had before that? So the whole point is you, you can basically sequence, uh, you, can sequence uh, you can sequence functions one after the other with logic in between, and the workflow manages the sequencing along with the logic. One clear differentiator, I think, might also be how this ties into cloud events. I think it'd be really important for us to be able to lay out exactly how this workflow engine is closely tied to the cloud event signature and kind of all the, the delivery, uh, potential delivery endpoints of uh, events. So how the workflow tied to events, right? Specifically cloud events. Is that, who, who is talking, please? It's um, Brian. Oh, Brian, okay. Okay, let's clarify this, I think, you know. Um, so the, I think they said are the workflow serverless. Um, I think I see comments say, you know, these functions are serverless. And this workflow, which orchestrate this function could be serverless too, right? But is there an explicit requirement for them to be? I mean, if these functions could technically be HTTP endpoints. I mean, an event underneath the cloud events definition, you know, you can deliver an event to anything, anything that implements the cloud events uh, uh, transport spec. And I think that's something, that, again, when we think about this, I think it's worth considering that um, in terms of the, the kind of APIs that we find, uh, how does that, again, adhere to, to the cloud events implementation? So, so Brian, if I understand, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. So, Brian, if I understand what you're saying is, let's say what's in the diagram, you're saying function F2 could be translated to a cloud event that could run in a different cloud. Is, is, is my understanding correct? Yes, correct. So you can imagine that okay. for instance, yeah. so that the function itself implements the cloud events um, uh, HTTP transport spec, Perfect. right? And so, Absolutely. therefore, by implementing that, anything doesn't matter what it is could be uh, could be considered a function. This perfect. Absolutely. Why not? I would say yes. Yeah. So, what well, maybe Fahar, would you like to put that you know comments in the meeting minutes? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think Brian is simply okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I could see that cloud events could actually be what is passed between each state. Uh, what is brought in through the events, you know, like event one, event two, that could actually be a cloud event. Uh, any Anywhere where a, um, a function is evoked, that's a cloud event. And an information between that's sent between one state and the next state could be cloud events. So they can be passed through the, uh, um, the workflow. Yes, exactly. 
Yeah. So basically, uh, the thing here, uh, I'm thinking the event here, all the event in the workflow will be cloud events, right? The format will be, um, it's better to be in cloud event format. And the information I'm hearing, the passing between the states, right, would also in, relate to the cloud event. Correct. Right? And I think, I think the triggering of a function even would potentially be uh, a slight expansion onto the HTTP uh, transport specification. Right, so maybe yeah. something uh, remind me a little bit more detail specifically associated with steps. Also, from what I've seen from these these potential workflows, there's also sometimes the need for a response coming from a function that's being invoked and being given an event, which we don't have a, a specification for there. So again, there we would actually need more of kind of a synchronous style of event delivery as opposed to asynchronous. But again, I think a lot of it can be brought very quickly back to the cloud events implementation. Yeah, so we definitely need to go into more detail on, on the request response, you know, between the, the workflow and the function itself. So that, that can be, you know, definitely looked at and uh, worked through. Cloud events, formation, passing between the states, uh, cloud, I, even, I relate it. Uh, let me put this on. cloud events and uh, synchronous cloud and the synchronous asynchronous rest and the response event uh, synchronous async of event of cloud events and the function functions okay um, we need to define this Okay, um, oh, let me see, the use case discussion, what he's putting here. Sorry. Yeah, here, use case for you, okay. Um, just want to make sure. It's, okay, good. Um, so let's go back here. I think we also derived some requirements, right? Like, you know, we need handle event, and then we need the correlation between the events. Um, I can put that in later. So I want to go to the next, the next uh, use case. This one. Any questions on the previous uh, use case? Any more questions? So let's go through this. Uh, use case then. Um, Fahad, did you put that? Yeah, yeah, I put this in. So yeah, I, I can probably, I mean, so this is basically illustrating if uh, how you can implement a workflow for streaming video on demand. So you basically put a, a massive video file, MPEG, MP4, whatever, and then you basically go through a workflow. So it basically okay. trans the output is multiple uh, streaming, streaming formats, either MP4, HLS, or Dash. So again, going through the workflow, once the instance starts, if the minute uh, a, a user uploads a video with metadata, it basically triggers either most probably an object event, I would assume, it'll go, this will, this will transition state one to implement function one. Function one will probably be an ingestion function. So the ingestion function was essentially, it analyzes the video, what, what is its resolution, 1080p, 1080i, 720p, blah, blah, blah. It can, it can store that information to database. The, it, it also sends all this, all this information, the response of the function one, it sends it to state two. The minute it goes to state two, depending upon the analysis that was done as function one, it goes ahead and depending upon the metadata file, it goes ahead and starts multiple transcoding functions. Again, I would assume that the input will specify what kind of streaming formats you want. One, either MP4 or MP4 and HLS, or MP4 and HLS or dash, blah, 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 whatever. Anyway, depending on that, state two will basically go ahead and start multiple transcoding functions. As soon as, now these will be asynchronous so that, because it will take a long time. So the functions have started, you now go you st you, and you basically wait in state three. As each and every 
as let's say uh, uh, at some point in time the mp4 transcoding is done event 3 will come when event 3 comes it will basically look at it see, see if it's complete and basically update the the database and then a function 3 will copy the the file either to an output storage or whatever and then again go to the next state which says whether all events are completed if not it goes waits for event 4 and 5 and basically the same thing happens and then finally the workflow ends so at the end of the at the input of the workflow you have submitted one a single massive video file uh, the output is depending upon what kind of streaming formats you want. The output is those particular streaming formats are nicely arranged on the output storage. Any okay. questions on that? Any no questions? questions? Okay. And below, okay, given the description of what I just mentioned, so you guys can read it. And if you have questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, this later, you know, you can always put in comments. So, but I think, you know, so from user point of view, you know, the user will specify such a workflow and then back end will take this workflow and then to implement uh, to see how to manage all these service functions to instantiate service functions to support this, right? And also use the workflow to orchestrate um, these service functions. So no questions, how about, is there any other? Oh, there's another long approval. Uh, I added that. Uh, oh, you did this? Is, okay. Yeah, I added that, but that is uh, similar to the loan approval process we discussed already. So I think we can skip that one, right? Oh, okay. So you put, okay, I see. So this is similar to the loan. Yeah. Oh, so you and uh, her, oh, do a similar thing. Okay, good. So, so I think, you know, um, so let me put down some, um, um, okay, no, hold on. Yeah, it looks, it looks very similar, except that what I've put inside one function, he has broken that up into multiple functions. But yeah, yeah. essentially it looks pretty much identical. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, okay, good. Okay, I see. So this is, uh, um, I think, I would like to first go out to see uh, some people. Could you put your name there? Okay. I think there are some other people joining later. Maybe you want to put your name, like you know, um, Cha 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 right? I would name there. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think you know we also derived some. Um, we can see. I think we want to summarize here. We need to define this, and also I think you know. I think we agree. Do we agree that you know we need um, a state? Need a state to handle the events. Handle the events. We need information passing. We need to uh, need a mechanism to specify information passing passing between states, right? Looks like this one. Um, for her, we need the information pass from state one to state two, right? because I analyzed the, the video result, right? Something like so that, are you, right? Are you, are you saying that's what needs to be in the standard or that's just something for the for this particular workflow? For I, think what Brian, for, I think what Brian is saying is we need to standardize the events, the, the way that we pass the events between the states and the, the response of the functions. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure if we want to, I mean, and Brian can basically add whether you also mean passing information between the states. Is that part of this this work group that we are trying to do? Yeah, it's a great, great question. I mean, my my perspective is that again, we're we're here to try to find a specification that our systems can adhere to in order to be able to participate in an, in kind of a distributed workflow. So I think that in terms of what we could potentially try to uh, deliver here would be things along the lines of an API uh, specification for delivery of events to steps, um, some details if necessary for things like state persistence, um, a specification around the event shape for step-to-step -step communication, so something like a step event, um, a specification for, de for a definition of a workflow, and then how that workflow is basically translated into configuration potentially for each step. Um, and then an API around invocation of functions, so event delivery, and then how do we handle things like synchronous invocation, getting the response, back from a function, uh, et cetera. 
I think those things specifically would enable us to be able to design a system that is open uh, and capable of being participated in by all parties. Respect for definition of flow. So, um, Brian, I can copy and, if you want, I can copy and paste some of these notes in there. Uh, as the yeah, you, you can just copy here. Uh, I, I didn't quite catch everything you said. You can just write here, okay? Um, I think I hope I catch everyone. Whatever. I think we also need, you know, a way to correlate multiple events, multiple events to the same workflow, right? Because if that work, because it involves multiple events. Um, so maybe Brian, yeah, you can put in more. You think we need to specify there, okay? Um. There you go. So that summar summarizes uh, what I had just mentioned. Again, I think I'm not saying that we should do go do all these, but I'm saying that these are some, some areas that we could potentially uh, think about in terms of potentially defining that would be directly associated with uh, this potential workflow engine, this, this, uh, this potential okay. workflow work. Very good. Um, so I think wh why some are green and some are purple, some are black? It's because it's dependent upon the person that added the, the suggestion. So I only have suggestive uh, capabilities. I can't oh. actually do direct editing. So I think it's better. Oh, I think probably dog has that because some of the other I, I did becomes black and some become is a green. I do not know why. It's, oh, um, maybe it's dog. Who has that, you know, to, is he in? Yeah, I think, I think Doug can only accept suggestions. Okay, um, okay. So I think, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pin him. Uh, okay, good. Um, so now I think we only have like uh, eight minutes. Let me quickly go through the next um, presentation. Is this offers? I think this is um, talk about how we, we, we can probably support it. Um, let me see whether I can share. I think actually in this document, um, I think I already put in something, which uh, uh, like the workflow, the, how we define it, something. Um, it's not really, it's still in draft state, but I think, you know, um, one way to do it, we can have, you know, different state, multiple state, one called event state. In the event state, we can specify what kind of event will trigger what kind of, you know, functions. Um, probably we can change this, you know, uh, this change this, you know, to action to function mode to make it more clear. And then these are the functions, the real functions. So function mode is like synchronous, asynchronous. I think, you know, event expression is like, you know, it's a one event or two event trigger it. So this is the, this state. And then there will be, uh, I think here the, there are some, you know, um, matching, there's, there's a timeout here. There's a result, say match what value, and then, you know, and some retry mechanism, and what's the next state? Um, and then there's another state with operation state, which doesn't need any event trigger. I think one of the use case, uh, this is to address the, the other, the, this use case, for example, I think. So in this state, there's no event trigger. You just do the some function, okay, or in, in this state, 
you do not any event trigger. So there are several state, states, different states to model different, um, I mean, different steps. And then there's a switch state, which I think uh, is a branching out state, depending on you, you match what value, and then you comparison how you compare it, and then you go to the next state. I think this address, the switch state address, you know, some use case like this, this is a switch state, right? You go to different state or let me see whether there are other. Yeah, here also. As long as you branch out in the state diagram, like here, branch out, and then it's like a switch state. So you go to different next state. Um, so I think, you know, this one, I will not go into detail, but we can take a look at this and then to see whether this makes sense. Oh, I see some comments already. Um, so maybe I think I would like to use the uh, last few minutes to go through the comments before diving into, you know, different presentation on the, uh, on the solution. Uh, we can probably postpone that to the next meeting um, because I think, you know, there are other, uh, IBM has another, has a presentation too, but I think the, uh, he cannot, uh, I think IBM, he cannot make it today. So let's do it next time. Um, I add what flow you treating long form. Okay, so this is fine. I think you just accept it. Sorry, I did. Here, all between states. Yeah, I think that's good. Now heroes, just accept it. So this is one. Um, so we, we're wrong. Are you, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh yeah, is it okay? I give a comment because you say there should be no, um, I think it, this should be out of, I think it should be in because we, we, we already have this use case to show that we yeah. need to correlate them together. Yeah, for, for okay. that, so if for you that can, makes sense. Okay, good. So if you can resolve it, that would be good. Sure. So, and this one is good. I don't think I understand the mix of workflow steps and even what is the event. Yeah, does this address your comments? It addresses my comment. I still don't agree we should go boil the ocean, but if the group wants to do that, that's fine. <laughs> I, I know your concern is how we go, how the implementation, implementation, yeah. back -end implementation yeah. can support this, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but we can, I, we, I do understand. I I do understand it simplifies things for the end developer and user, so I'm fine. Okay, great. I think that's uh, actually, I, that's the most important thing because I, I think this, the goal of this um, workflow specification is more on, you know, how we simplify the users, um, um, the users for the, um, you know, specify the workflow. It's not, it's really not really on how backend should implement it because we cannot define a standard way for the backend implementation. Um, those, yeah, will be left out for, I mean, different uh, implementation, backend, a different plugin to do it, right? But we can discuss that, that's no problem. But I think the, the goal is to, for the end, for the front end users um, specification, I mean, how we can provide specification for the front end user to, specify the workflow. Okay. Um, so if you are fine with that, that's good. So here, no. Okay. To the, what, what does this mean, Alex? So performing the associate for present to the no next state. I do not know what this mean. So here is another, your comment. Um, you said, for instance, the need for this case, event state. Oh, yeah, so this one, we're wrong. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, they all yeah. tie together, right? Now, if, if you want to have a workflow that's blocking and stopping for states, sure, like, if that's what we want, it's fine. Yeah, also the first uh, the first one, the first event, the first state, yeah, no, when you start the, the workflow, event. it's an event. No, the, we don't need so even we have to have a... No, no, because that could be something just triggering a, a, a workflow, right? Because we don't need to have another state for that. But that's fine. Like, let's not get into that more. Like, if, if you want to have events in the middle of the workflows, that's fine. Yeah, because we, well, anyway, we need to have that too. Okay. At start state, this state takes input as the initial st state of the workflow. Okay. So for this one, yeah, I think we can discuss this, you know, whether we want to have a start state or the operational state, operation state or event state could be used as a start state to pass on the 
whatever input information. Um, now, Hiro, are you there? Uh, yes. Uh, I I'm okay. Mm. Yeah, I think that the stack state is used for to start a state machine. I think I think we need some way to start a state machine, right? So. Uh, um. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um. So so this is we can discuss later because I'm thinking. Okay, if the first, uh, if the state machine or the workflow is triggered by an event, if the event has not come. If we have a start state, then that means we have to start it. How is start it? Since we do not want to waste resources on the, you know, on starting the workflow before the event arrives. Yeah. So if we have a start state, that means you know we start it whenever we want, but the event has not come yet. Well, wasting. Although the if you implement it well, the workflow consumes little resource, almost uh, close to zero resource. Um, but still, so that's yeah, what I'm thinking with the Yeah, I, I have a, I have a step function in my mind. So, uh, just yeah, I know. Case, yeah. In case of yeah, but it, so we can approach this two ways. Either we can have an explicit start state, or we can have a, a field within, you know, within each state that could be marked as a, a Boolean within each state to say this is the start state. So it could be done either way. And, and, and if we do the second approach, then any state, an event state, an operation state, a switch state, any one of these states could be marked as the, as the start state. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. Because we never know how the each each user, each developer's workflow look like, right? It could start with an event state, or it could start with an operation state, which doesn't have any event, or it could start with a, a, a branching or switch state or whatever. Yeah, I think that, that might be the best approach. Yeah, could be. Maybe would you like to add your comments to the, the hero? We can decide this is more, we can decide this later when we go into the uh, hey guys, detailed yeah. I need you to drop off. Let's like, yeah, I think we passed 1130. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, okay. Thanks. So I'm going to go through this and then, um, to accept it. Okay. Or give more comments. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Let's did continue discussion in the next meeting. Okay. okay bye. Thank you everybody. Right. Bye, Thank everybody. you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry. I didn't realize you. No, it's all good. Okay. Uh, yes. Can I talk a little bit? Pardon? Uh, can, can we talk a little bit? Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't mention, I didn't make a comment into the, this document, but uh, I feel we need to discuss a little bit about uh, the action array. Action array? array. You mean the action? Yeah. Yeah. The function, right? In sequence or in parallel? Array. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think we need uh, to do that. Yeah, in order to explain the parallel of sequences, I think uh, the the array might be better to be a two-dimensional array because uh, the multiple thread can have, a, so that the multiple thread can have a sequence of functions. So, so it, it will be uh, uh, the, the two-dimensional array would be a more appropriate, appropriate, that's I feel. Okay, I see. Would you like to write this in, the, in your comment or you can put into the, yeah. uh, the text, the document? Yeah. That would be yeah. easier. So, yeah. yeah, then you know, you write in the comment and then we discuss through that. Okay. And then we can discuss yeah. in the next meeting. You can okay. put an agenda. You know, you know the meeting minutes, right? Yes, you can post yes. the agenda. I will okay. post some agenda. You can also post what you would like to discuss there. Okay. 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 So okay. thank you. Have okay, a, you're have welcome. A nice day. Yeah. Have okay. a nice day. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.